Hello, and welcome back to Battle Plan, a podcast focused on spiritual warfare. I'm Steve Hemphill. Battle Plan is an ongoing discussion of how we put our faith into action in unique and effective ways. This usually involves prayer plus action of some type, thus the ministry name, active-faith.org. My email is stevehemphill1 at me.com. In our last episode, we talked about satanic prayer on a plane. Today, we're covering faith and miracles are connected. One of the Ten Commandments discussed the worship of idols. Exodus 20, verses 3 to 6, NLT says, You must not have any other God but me. You must not make for yourself an idol of any kind or an image of anything in the heavens or on the earth or in the sea. You must not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God who will not tolerate your affection for any other gods. I lay the sins of the parents upon their children. The entire family is affected, even children in the third and fourth generations of those who reject me. But I lavish unfailing love for a thousand generations on those who love me and obey my commands. Now, With that backdrop, notice that when poisonous snakes attacked Israel in the desert, notice what was done to save them. This is Numbers 21, 8 through 9 NLT. Then the Lord told him, make a replica of a poisonous snake and attach it to a pole. All who are bitten will live if they simply look at it. So Moses made a snake out of bronze and attached it to a pole. Then anyone who was bitten by a snake could look at the bronze snake and be healed. Remember, Moses was their mediator. He talked to God for Israel, and he brought messages from God to Israel, and he had brought them the Ten Commandments. Can you imagine the criticism Moses probably got by making a graven image right after bringing them the Ten Commandments? I can just picture the conversation going like this. Moses, you made this bronze statue of a snake on a cross. How in the world is this not a graven image that you told us not to have? It's really hard for me to explain, but God told me to do this, and it's working. Whether it's working or not, Moses, is irrelevant. You're teaching people to do what God specifically told us not to do. They're not to worship the statue, though. They're only supposed to look at it so they can be healed. Moses, you're sadly mistaken. You are idolizing that snake, and it literally represents the enemy from the Garden of Eden. Be careful, Israelites. You might just find yourself fighting against God. Do you want relief from your problems, or do you want to wallow around and die in them? This is the same kind of arguments I've heard about the stakes. The stakes with scripture on them are not an idol. They point to God. God's word is where the power lies. Matthew 13, 54 to 58, NIV, when Jesus came to his hometown, he began teaching the people in their synagogue, and they were amazed. Where did this man get this wisdom and these miraculous powers, they asked? Isn't this a carpenter's son? Isn't his mother named Mary? And aren't his brothers James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas? Aren't all his sisters with us? Where then did this man get all these things? And they took offense at him. But Jesus said to them, a prophet is not without honor, except in his own town and in his own home. And he did not do many miracles there because of their lack of faith. If you had told these Jews that a lack of faith is why Jesus didn't perform many miracles in their city, they would have argued with that. They, they would say, well, that kind of stuff only happened in Moses' time. Just like people are saying today, this doesn't happen today. It only happened in Jesus' time. God is not the great I used to could. He's still in the miracle business. And miracles and faith are connected. If you want to see a miracle, it takes faith. So in light of today's thoughts, let me suggest that part of your personal battle plan might be to ask God to help you to have the faith necessary for you to have the miracle needed in your family, your hometown, your state, your nation. Maybe you could pray like this. 
Lord, forgive me for my lack of faith. Help me to truly believe. I really do want to see a miracle. I want to see someone restored to their faith. I want to see a marriage saved. I want to see crime go down. I want to see revival in Jesus' name. You can visit our website at active-faith.org and donate there if you like. See you next time on Battle Plan, where we'll discuss Paul's thorn in the flesh. Don't miss this interesting episode. And let me remind you to keep praying because prayer works. God loves you and I love you. Have a great day.